Good evening, friends. We're happy to be here again this evening. What an amazing series of meetings we have been having. Our evangelist pastor, Mario Philip, has been thrilling our hearts with his powerful, powerful messages. I hope you have been enjoying yourselves and have been blessed as much as I have. I want to say welcome to everyone. I hope you have had a fabulous day so far and is ready, um, ready to receive another powerful presentation from uh, our evangelist. Tonight it will be experiencing the power of prayer. And I want you to know that um, God has a lot of blessings in store for you tonight. And so, why don't you, why don't you sit tight, get ready to be taken on this mountaintop experience? But before we get going, I want to invite you to look at our short video. And tonight, the video is entitled, Renewing the Wasteline. Renewing the Wasteline. May God bless you this evening. Thank you. Today's health spot is renewing the waistline. Obesity is a growing problem, especially where Western foods are consumed. Statistics show that one in four adults are obese, around one third of 10 to 11 year olds, and one fifth of four to five year olds are overweight or obese. There are four types of fat, brown adipose tissue, white adipose tissue, subcutaneous fat, and visceral fat. Brown adipose tissue, also known as brown fat, is more likely to have muscle. Studies have shown that brown fat is found in lean adults and children. When this fat is stimulated, it burns calories easily. White adipose tissue, or white fat, stores energy and produces hormones. Subcutaneous fat maintains body temperature and helps protect bones and muscles. This fat is just underneath the skin. Visceral fat, also known as intra-abdominal fat, is found in the midsection. It is stored around internal organs such as the liver, pancreas, and intestines. It is also an active fat and plays a part in how hormones function. It is responsible for the risk of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and Alzheimer's. When cortisol is released, the body goes into survival mode and some people will find comfort in eating their favorite food. But cortisol is a result of stress. That signal produced eating response. Therefore, a stressful environment is a significant factor that contributes to obesity. Leptin, on the other hand, is a hormone produced by fat cells that sends signals to the hypothalamus to indicate that you are full. If the signal does not get to the brain, energy expenditure will be reduced and a signal for food will be sent. A strong-willed person can be overcome by leptin resistance. Obesity does not necessarily mean that a person has less willpower. Insulin is responsible for leptin resistance. The Western diet is laced with insulin-producing products like sugar and artificial sweeteners. The more insulin your body produces, the less you'll feel satiated. Insulin is stored as fat. That's why sugar consumption is not good for health. When insulin is present, the brain goes into starvation mode, and fast food serves that purpose conveniently. Sugar also lowers the regulation of dopamine in the nucleus accumbens, which means the more fast food you eat, the less tasteful it becomes over time. Although obesity has a genetic component, diet plays a significant role in how children are affected. Obesity prevention begins in avoiding sugar, fast and prepackaged food, and focusing more on a plant-based diet. Here are some tips on how to avoid becoming obese. Engineered or hyperpalatable junk foods are products that are engineered to be cheap, have long shelf life, and taste good. These foods are heavily marketed towards children and teenagers. These highly engineered junk foods cause powerful stimulation of the reward centers in the brain and are the same areas that are triggered by cocaine, alcohol, nicotine, cannabis, and other drugs. Plant-based foods contain nutrition and are stimulant-free which are good for the body. Masticate your food thoroughly. Chew your food slowly and don't overeat because your stomach is only the size of your fist. Overeating is also linked to a lack of temperance. When you control how much you eat, it can change how you think and act. Eat at regular times. Don't skip meals. 
When you skip breakfast or eat irregularly, it'll cause the body to store fat. Eating breakfast also gets metabolism started and prevents you from feeling hungry mid-morning. Keep your evening meal small. We've all heard the saying, eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and supper like a pauper. This enables you to use up the nutrients throughout the day and allow your whole body to rest in the evening. Nutrition is found in plants, and your body will work as it was intended to. May this promise be our experience. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Sweet hour of bread, sweet hour of bread, that calls me from a world of cares and be. My Father's throne Make all my wants And we should know In seasons of distress Let us pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercies toward us. Thank you for being able to come before you. Thank you for this platform. Dear Lord, we pray that you'll forgive us for our sins. You'll forgive us for our iniquities. Dear Lord, you'll pardon us. That our worship and our praise will be acceptable unto you. Thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity to have this campaign online, for this platform once again, dear Lord, that you'll bless it. You'll bless the efforts of the team. You'll bless the speaker. You'll bless the hearts of those that are watching online. You'll bless the hearts of the team, that you may change us, dear Lord, that you'll work in us, you'll reveal yourself to us, and you'll fill us with your Holy Spirit, dear Father. We thank you for all that you have done, dear Lord, and we pray that we pray for the sick, the sad, those who are lonely those who are going through very tough times dear father we pray that you will be with them in a special special way and you give them a special blessing dear lord we thank you once again for all that you are doing for all that you will do in our lives dear father and once again i pray that you put a special blessing on this campaign in the name of jesus i ask these things amen temple you are the voice we are your song you are a god we are your people you are the light we stand in awe we stand Not 
pleasant good evening once again to all of you and thank you for joining us for another evening in our Experience the Power campaign. I trust that you have been having a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. I want to thank all of you for staying with us and for being with us thus far. Uh, we know that indeed the power of God um, has indeed been felt in your life. And once again, you have returned for another outpouring of his power in your life. I want to take this opportunity to uh, welcome our visiting friends, those of you who have been regular. I want to welcome you. And in case we have any first-time visitors, I want to also welcome you. As you have been hearing, we are planning a big baptism come December the 5th. And I know there are some of you who have already decided that you would like to get baptized. Uh, those of you who are yet to make that decision, we would like you to fill up the decision card that can be found in the chat section of this stream. We need to fill up that card so that we can know who you are. And in case you may be out of the United Kingdom, outside the United Kingdom, you can still fill up that card and tell us who you are. We can connect you to somewhere or someone that can help you in that decision process. Uh, but come Sabbath, uh, we would definitely want to have a big baptism. And I want you to know that this campaign is also being run concurrently with, uh, uh, with our sister field in Pakistan. And thus, um, come the 5th, we'll be having, they will also be having a baptism um, you know, in collaboration with us here in the United Kingdom. I trust that you've been having a wonderful time. And um, at the end of this message tonight, we would, I would like to say a special prayer for all of you, especially those of you who are going through challenges. As tonight, we will be looking at experiencing the power of prayer. And um, I know that uh, prayer works, and there are many of you today who have been, uh, your life has been a miracle. You've been saved by prayer. You are being sustained by prayer, and yet still there are others of you who have challenges that you would like to bring before the Lord. So tonight, I would like to say a special prayer at the end of the message um, for those of you who are going through such challenges and would like to take it to the Lord in prayer. And so tonight, um, I wanted you to bow your heads with me now as we enter into the Word of God. Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Tonight, oh God, we come to you with the assurance, knowing that there is power in prayer. And so hear and accept our message tonight. Give this preacher utterance, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Experiencing the power of prayer. I want to declare to you tonight that there is one medicine that works for every problem, there is one cure that can be applied to every diagnosis. I want to declare to someone tonight that the child of God has a weapon in their hand that can enable them to fight against the wiles of the enemy. I want to proclaim tonight, based upon the authority of God's word, that every child of God has a war room, 
a place where you can go to battle with the enemy. Tonight, brothers and sisters, if you have not yet known, let me announce to you that prayer works. Prayer works. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've come by here tonight to tell someone prayer changes things. Prayer changes people. <laughs> prayer makes a difference. There is power in prayer. And tonight, if you don't believe there is power in prayer, why not try it tonight? And you will see that God still answers prayer. God still hears the prayer of his people. I've come by to tell someone tonight that we serve a prayer answering God. We serve a God who attends to the prayer of his people. Are you weak and heavy laden? Tonight, are you burdened by the weight of sin? Are you pressed down tonight? Are your burdens so heavy that you don't know who to turn to? Is your body wrapped by pain and sickness tonight? Have you lost hope? Have you not? Have you, have you no hope for tomorrow? Have you lost your zeal and your motivation for living? Tonight, I want you to know that prayer is the answer. I want to take you to the word of God tonight. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. The book of Acts is actually the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And whenever the Holy Spirit is in the, in, is, is in the midst, something happens. Are you laying here hearing me tonight? Whenever the Spirit of God is moving, something happens. And the Holy Spirit often moves in prayer meeting when prayer is being heard. And in the book of Acts, we find the early apostles meeting in prayer, spending time together in prayer. In fact, the Holy Spirit descended upon them in the upper room while they were in prayer. In Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, and I'm reading uh, for you verse 14, the Bible said, all these, referring to the early disciples, were in one accord, devoting themselves to prayer. <laughs> Listen, brethren, today, this world is existing because of praying Christian. I want every child to know, if you've got a praying mother, then that's the reason for your survival. I want every, every husband, every wife to know, if you've got a praying spouse, that is the reason for your existence. Let me tell you something. Even the ungodly who are not praying, it is the prayers of the righteous that is keeping this world from destruction. The early disciples, they gathered together in prayer. And the Bible said, in response to their prayer, the Holy Spirit descended upon them like a rushing mighty wind. I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what problems you are facing tonight. Your challenges may be insurmountable tonight. But I've come by to let you know there is no mountain too high that prayer cannot break down. There is no river too wide that prayer cannot take you across. There is no problem too big that prayer cannot solve. There is no sickness that have gone too far that prayer cannot reverse. There is no child that has gone astray that prayer cannot bring back. There is no marriage that is in problems that prayer cannot restore. Ah, there is no life that is lost that prayer cannot rescue. Prayer can do it. Prayer 
can change it. Prayer can remove it. Tonight, I wish that God's people will get down to pray. Listen, brethren, when we pray, Satan trembles. When the church gets down to pray, demons flee. When we pray, chains are broken. When we pray, captives are set free. When we pray, children come back home. When we pray, I want you to know demons are released. Prayer changes us. So in Acts chapter 4, the Bible said, and when they were released, referring to Peter and James, they went to their friends, Peter and John, sorry, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voice together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made heaven and earth and sea and everything in it, who brought the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, Why do the Gentiles rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city, they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. This is what the elders said in response to the incarceration of Peter and John. And now, O Lord, look upon their threats. And grant your servants to continue to speak your word with boldness. That is the prayer. That is the prayer of the elders uh, for Peter and John as their lives were threatened. The believers came together and prayed. The believers said, Lord, look upon the threats and grant your servant to speak your word with boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal. And when they prayed, the Bible said, when they prayed, Acts chapter 1 verses, Acts chapter 4 verse 31, the place where they were was shaken. Are you listening to me? I'm saying that when we pray, the power of God is released. The Bible said, when they prayed, the place was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. I've come by to let someone know that until you pray, the power of God cannot be released. It is until you pray that the demons in hell will tremble. I've come by to tell someone that God is looking for some prayer warriors. People who are willing to go to battle with the enemy. I know that the devil is wrecking havoc in this world. He is destroying families, destroying marriages, destroying children. He is destroying our society. We cannot fight him on his turf. We must bring him in the prayer room. You see, brethren, when we pray, everything gets unshackled. The Bible said the early believers, they met to pray and the Spirit of God filled the room as they continue to speak the word of God with boldness. That's what happens when God's people pray. Tonight, brothers and sisters, I've come by to let us know that God wants his people to bring before him their request. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, make your requests be known to God. Tonight, brothers and sisters, take it to the Lord in prayer. Ah, do you have a financial problem? 
Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are you having problems at your job? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Is your family in crisis? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are your children giving problems? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Is your health falling apart? Take it to the Lord in prayer. The Bible said all things. Take it to the Lord in prayer. I found that when you fall on your knees, the answers come down as the prayers go up. God's people should pray for deliverance from difficulty. Psalms chapter, Psalms 4 and verse 1 says, Answer me when I call, O my God. You have given me relief in my distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. Psalm 107 verse 6 says, Then they cry to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. Brothers and sisters, tonight, someone needs to cry out to the Lord. It doesn't matter whether or not you have prayed before. Tonight, you can just open your mouth and say, Lord, save me. But if you cry to the Lord tonight in your distress, he has promised us that he will hear us because there is power in prayer. Prayer has dynamite power that can shake the kingdom of darkness and create a highway for God's people to walk. Yes, God can still give deliverance through prayer. Tonight, God can deliver you from your enemies. Psalm 17 verses 8 and 9 says, Keep me, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked one who seek to do me violence, my deadly enemies who surround me. I know there are people tonight who just do not like you. You haven't done them anything uh, you do not know them from Adam. They just saw you but just don't like you. There are enemies that the devil has planted in your life. There are people who are seeking to do you evil. But tonight, I've come by to let you know that if you fall on your knees, God can protect you against the evil one and from your enemies. He will shelter you in the midst of the storm so that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment, God will condemn it tonight. I want you to know that prayer forms a shield around you. Be careful what you do with a praying man. If you touch a man of God or a woman of God who is praying, you better watch your back because prayer comes back at you. Are you listening to me tonight? That's why brethren, prayer, prayer is a defense. Prayer is a defense. I want you to know brethren, that when we are in trouble, we can pray. Second Chronicles, the word of God speaks to us tonight. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. What a, what a powerful reminder to God's people tonight. The Bible says, if my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land. If my people shall humble themselves and pray. Tonight, God wants you to pray. God wants you to pray. You see, folks, we are weak because we are failing to spend time in prayer. Prayer works. In the book of Acts, go with me quickly to Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. The Bible said, and at that time, I'm reading from verse 1. Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. 
He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. That's what was happening. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter. The early church was on the threat. These was the days of the unleavened bread. And when he seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending that after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison. But, earnest prayer. But, earnest prayer. Are you listening to me? I want somebody to say, but prayer. But prayer was made to God by the church. You should have died, but prayer. You didn't have to be here, but prayer. You lost your mind, but prayer. You lost your job, but prayer. Yes, things were going bad, but prayer. Listen to me. Tonight, I want you to know that I'm surviving, but prayer. I didn't have to be here, but prayer. Someone is praying for you. Are you listening tonight? Someone is interceding for you. You may not know that there is a child who have gone astray, uh, walked away from the Lord, and you don't know it, young man, young woman. It is the prayer of your mother and father that still have you alive today. I've come by to tell someone that you are here today, but prayer. Prayer is making a difference in your life. You may not know it, but prayer is keeping you alive today. I'm happy tonight that although Peter was in prison, the Bible said, but prayer. Prayer made a difference. You might be in a, you might be in a, you, you, you might be in a tight place. You may not be where you want to be, but if someone is praying for you, that's why I want to encourage you, pray for somebody tonight. Pray for someone tonight. If you have someone that you want to see accept Jesus, pray for them. If you've got a relative that is sick in the hospital, pray for them. If you have a child that is giving problems, pray for them. A marriage that's on the rock, pray for them. Prayer works. Thank God the church prayed for Peter because of the prayer of the church for Peter. Thank God there are some mothers who are bruising their knees praying for the children, but prayer. Thank God there are some fathers who are bruising their knees praying, but prayer. Prayer makes a big difference in this world tonight. And I've come by to tell someone here that you are here today because of prayer. And so the Bible said, Peter was in prison, but prayer was made on his behalf. You are here tonight as a result of prayer. Yes, you may not have yet given your life to the Lord, but the only reason the devil hasn't snatched your life as yet is because of prayer. I remember that night when I was driving my car back in Trinidad and I fell asleep on the road, running into a vehicle head on. Yes, the vehicle got written off. I should have died that night, but prayer. Listen to me, folks. Many times our life could have been snatched out of us. Many times we should have been dead, but prayer. I've come by to tell someone tonight that there is power in prayer. Prayer is making a difference in your life, in the life of the church, in the life of your family, in the life of this country. If we don't pray, things will be worse than they are today. Peter was in prison, but the church prayed. The Bible said, Reading from Acts chapter 12 verse 6. Now when Herod was about to bring him out on the very night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains and sentry before the guard. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before him. 
and a light shone into the cell, he struck Peter and said, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to Peter, Dress yourself, put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and followed me. Prayer sent an angel to the aid of God's messenger. And he went out and followed him. And he did not know where he was going. Yes, folks, that's what prayer did. Prayer released Peter from prison. Tonight, there are many of you who are shackled by sin. Shackled under the weight of what the enemy has trapped you with. Tonight, prayer can release you. Prayer can deliver you. And that's why I want you to visit our prayer room. We have a prayer room that is running on this campaign every evening. The numbers are always flashed on the screen for you. Visit the prayer room because prayer can help you to make that decision for the Lord. Peter was delivered from prison because of prayer. And so the Bible said, and I'm reading from verse 12 of Acts chapter 13, and when he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many others were gathered and were praying. <laughs> Brethren, tonight, thank God that there are still people in this world who are praying. <laughs> tonight, I want you to know that when people are in crisis, we should be praying for them. Uh, sometimes you don't understand that your prayers can go where you cannot go. Your prayers can do what you cannot do. Your prayers have power and it has power because when we pray God answers when we pray all the legions of heaven all the angelic host that excel in strength they come to our aid prayer unlock the doors of heaven prayer unleashes divine power prayer brings you in touch with answers tonight Peter was praying, heaven was moving. As we pray for people tonight, chains will be broken. As we pray for people tonight, some of you listening to this message, prayer will set you free. I don't know what you're going through, but I've come by to let you know there is answer in prayer. Your answer is on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way. You may have been going through what you've been going through for a very long time, hanging there. Your answer is on the way. David prayed in Psalms 28. David said, to you, O Lord, I call my rock. Be not deaf to me. If you be silent, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my plea when I cry for your help. That's David praying. Listen to me. Tonight, you can pray. Jacob prayed in the Bible. Jacob, in, in Genesis 32, verse 9, Jacob said, Oh God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, Oh Lord, who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred, and I may do you good. I am not worthy of the least of the deeds of your steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you've shown to your servant. For with only my staff, I crossed this Jordan, and now I've become two camps. That's the prayer of Jacob. Elijah prayed in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 4. The Bible said, but he himself went on a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked the Lord saying, it is enough, O Lord, Elijah praying, take my life. I am no better than my father's tonight. I want you to know even Jeremiah prayed. In Jeremiah chapter 15, verses 15 onwards, he says, Oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake, I bear reproach. Yes, folks, Jeremiah prayed. I've come by to let you know that even Jesus 
prayed. In fact, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus says, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will be done. Thank God that Jesus prayed. Uh, tonight, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that you too can pray. Yes, if Jacob and Jeremiah and David and Elijah and Jesus can pray, then you can pray tonight. There is power in prayer, but you cannot experience that power unless you fall on your knees and cry out to God for healing in prayer. You see, brethren, I've come by to tell somebody that we should pray for each other. We should pray for the needs of each other. Prayer works. The early church prayed and the earth trembled. The early church prayed and Peter was released from captivity. Tonight, there is someone who is shackled under the weight of sin. The prayer of the saints will release you because it is not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, said the Lord. Tonight, God wants to listen to someone and grant you deliverance from your predicament. I don't know what you're going through tonight, but I've come by to let you know that God can listen, God can hear your prayer, God can grant you a new day. Indeed, brothers and sisters, we need to pray for others. Moses prayed for the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 18 to 19. Samuel prayed for Israel in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 5 to 9. Job prayed for his friends in Job 42, verse 10. Jeremiah prayed for E for Judah in Jeremiah chapter 7, 6, 7 verse 16. Jesus intercede for believers in Romans 8 and verse 4. I want you to know tonight that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. In fact, sometimes you want to pray and you don't know how to pray. You don't know how to mix the words. You don't know how to form the words. In fact, there are times you feel so embarrassed, so discouraged, so downhearted that you don't know how to pray. Well, I come by to let you know sometimes you don't have to pray. You can just hum. You can just whisper in your mind. The Bible said that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words words. Sometimes the burden you bear is so heavy that no word can actually capture the sentiments of your heart. But there is power in prayer. You are not alone. If you have the intention, the Holy Spirit can take the groanings of your heart and take them to the throne of grace. Tonight, brothers and sisters, we need to intercede for each other. Pray Pray for people. Pray for those who hate you. Pray for your children. Pray for the rulers of our country. We need to start lifting each other up more in prayer because there is power in prayer. Tonight, there is someone here. You, your life is in need of a change. Your life has been going downhill. You have not yet given Jesus your life. Tonight, prayer can turn things around for you. Prayer turn things around for Hezekiah. Prayer turn things around for Daniel. Prayer turn things around for Paul. Prayer can turn things around for you. Why not give Jesus your life tonight? Someone is praying for you. Even if you don't know it, someone is praying for you. That's why you are alive today. 
Someone is praying for you tonight. God has spared your life because of prayer so that you can accept him as your personal Lord and Savior tonight. If you have not yet given your life to Jesus, tonight, tonight is the night. I want you to go, go to the chat section in this live stream. And why not fill up the decision card? Your life may be in ruin. Yes, tonight you may be burdened. Why not tonight fill up that decision card? Why not tonight visit the prayer room? The numbers are being posted on the screen. Tonight, deliverance can be yours. You don't have to walk that road alone tonight. Prayer can walk it with you tonight, brothers and sisters. I want to let you know that God still hears and answers prayer. There is someone tonight who needs deliverance. I want to pray for you tonight. There is someone here who needs a touch from the Lord. I want to pray for you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, tonight, oh God, we thank you that there is power in prayer. Father, tonight there is someone on this line who need to experience the power of prayer. Their life is shackled by the weight of sin. They have been bombarded on every side by the enemy. Today they are at their wit's end. They are now thinking of throwing in the towel. Tonight, oh God, I pray for that individual that you will grant them release and deliverance in the name of Jesus. There is that child that has gone astray tonight. You have heard and seen the prayer of that mother tonight, oh God. Bring wayward children back home. There are families that are on the rocks tonight. Children are hurting. Parents are fighting. Tonight, oh God, I want to pray for families that you will bring peace and healing in the homes tonight. Father, tonight there are people who are hooked on addiction. There are some tonight who are hooked, oh God, on temptations that they have been yielding to. Tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus, break every demonic yoke. Break every chain that the devil has ensnared your people with and grant them deliverance. There is someone tonight who wants to follow you but they are halting between two opinions. Tonight, I pray for them that your Holy Spirit will give them the strength to make that decision for you. And so tonight, oh God, I place everyone in your hand. Someone may have a prayer request tonight in their heart. I want to pray specially for that person that whatever challenges they have in their life, whatever problems they are going through tonight, that you will hear the utterings of their heart, the groanings of their heart, and grant them deliverance, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Let the people of God say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Philip, for another um, tremendous, powerful uh, presentation this evening. Um, reminding us of the, the power of prayer. You have reminded us that prayer is the key that unlocked heaven's storehouse. And that all of us have been given this key. Thank you, thank you, thank you once again for such a powerful presentation. Friends, I want to invite you to come back tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, we have something planned for you. Something wonderful. The evangelist will, will take us on a journey to experience the power of our conviction. Again, I wish you a very good night until tomorrow night. God bless you.
Giving breath to the dying, waving tears.